Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at how to find area inside a polar graph. We're going to take a look at three rather straightforward examples. And from the page before this, we have a formula that's generated. And that formula is area equals one half the integral from a to b of r squared d theta. That's our formula. What we have to figure out is what are the a and b values. So let's just get after this. Let's sketch the graph of 2 plus 2 sine theta and find the area bounded by the graph. Now it would be really nice if you already knew that this was a cardioid, and you should. But let's say you just don't know that this is a cardioid. Then what you want to do is you want to make yourself a table of values for theta and for r. Let's find out where the graph is when theta equals 0. If you plug in 2, I'm sorry, 0 for theta, 2 times the sine of 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So we're at the ordered pair r comma theta, we're out the second circle, and our angle is zero, and that is right here, because this positive x-axis is theta equals zero. Then if you plug in pi over two, the sine of pi over two is one, times two is two, plus two is four. So at 90 degree rotation, or at pi over two, we're all the way up here at four. And then if we plug in a pi, we are back to two, and then if we plug in a 3 pi over 2, we are at 0 because the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. This means we are at the pole. So at 3 pi over 2, which is straight down, we are at the pole or at the origin. And then if you plug in 2 pi, you get right back to 2 because 2 pi is the same thing as 0. Now that doesn't tell you everything you need to know, but you should know that this is a cardioid or a heart-shaped graph because there's a plus sign or a minus sign and these numbers match. They're the same thing. And so this is not going to be very good. I'm going to try and sketch this as best I can. But your cardioid is going to look something like this. And on top of that, we, as we graph this, we see that it takes from 0 all the way out to 2 pi for me to get back to where I started. So my area is going to equal 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r squared, and your r is 2 plus 2 sine theta, d theta. And from the calculator, I get that this area is 18.8496. Now let's take a look at just setting up an integral expression to find the area of one petal of 2 sine of 3 theta. Now you should know that these are polar roses. You should know that this is going to have three petals. You should know that the first petal is going to be angled at 30 degrees and also that they are going to be 120 degrees apart. It's angled at 30 degrees because you do 90 divided by 3 to get 30 and then you you have to get three petals inside of 360. So 360 divided by 3 is 120. So the first one is 30, then 30 plus 120 is 150. 150 plus 120 is 270. And so that's what you're going to get. Now let's just say you didn't know that. You could do the table of values. But there is one thing that I don't know, and that is how long does it take to get one petal graph? So let's go ahead and figure out where the graph starts. I really do like to figure out where the r is when theta starts at 0. If you plug in 0 for theta, you get the sine of 0, which is just 0. So we are starting at the pole. Now what happens if I plug in 30 degrees, or pi over 6? Pi over 6 times 3 is 3 pi over 6, which is actually pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So at 30 degrees, I need to be out here at the second circle. So it should be somewhere in here. And then, if I plug in a pi over 3, pi over 3 times 3 is pi, and the sine of pi is 0. And so I'm back to here. So this graph gets sketched like this. Here's the first pedal. I'm going to go ahead and finish the graph and show you what happens after that. Then it comes down here like this. It angles off over here. That's Oh, I went way too far there. Sorry about that. But that's your three-petal flower. And it sketches it like this. These radii sweep out the graph like this. That's how it gets sketched. 
Now I'm going to take advantage of symmetry. I know it takes from 0 to pi over 3 to get to start at the pole and get back to the pole by my table of values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the area of one petal is going to be 1 half the integral from, I'm only going to go halfway because these petals are symmetric, and so I reached the maximum distance away when theta was pi over 6. So I'm going to go 0 to pi over 6. That's only going to be half a petal. I'll fix that in just a minute. So we go from A to B of our R squared, and if I square this, that's pretty easy to square. I'm going to go ahead and square the 2 and square the sign. That will give me the area of what I have sketched here, but I want to find the area of one petal, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to double this answer, which would take away the one half. And that would be my, it just says do not evaluate, so that's my area there. All right, so let's do another example. How about four cosine of two theta? Now you should know that this is going to have four petals because if it is a polar rose, and if this number in front of the theta is even, you double that to get the number of petals. And on top of that, I really do like to figure out where is r when theta is 0. So if you plug in 0 for theta, you get the cosine of 0, which is 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. So we're starting all the way out here. That's the beginning. Then I want to figure out, and, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. You should know that this is 4 petals. It's graphed like this. One, two, three, four. Doing my best here. Doing my best. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Oh, I've got a little hiccup there. A couple of hiccups. Got to finish strong. Okay, I don't know. But anyway, that's how the graph gets sketched. And you can figure that out by plugging in a whole bunch of values for theta. And we want to find the area of one pedal. I'm going to use symmetry again. The first radial line was right here, and I want to figure out when does this radial line, or when does this radius, get back to having a zero distance, or a zero length, or when does it get back to the pole? I know at zero, it started out here at four, but what angle do I have right here when it's back to the pole? So I can do a little trigonometry and algebra combined to figure that out. I want to find out when is this r, when does this equal zero? This is going to equal 0 any time 2 theta gives me an angle that cosine is 0 at. One of those is at pi over 2. That's the first time that cosine is 0. So that theta would be pi over 4, just dividing both sides by 2. Let's just verify. Let's plug pi over 4 in for theta. 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So can you believe that that angle right there, that radial line, is about 45 degrees? I can't. So I'm going to say that my area is going to equal, I'm going to go ahead and double this now because I'm going to use symmetry. This part right here is only half of one pedal. So I'm going to say 2 times 1 half the integral from, it took from 0, a rotation of pi over 4 for me to get back to the pole. That, that gave me that upper half and then now it's just r squared, fix my 4 there, r squared is 16 cosine squared of 2 theta d theta. And that will be my area. And of course, the 2 and the 1 half would cancel. So that's your setup. So that's the first part on area, and I will see you guys tomorrow.